Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. If you've already purchased or are thinking of purchasing Xire Photo, you may have noticed that there is an analytics extension available for it for $39. And you may be wondering what that extension is all about and whether or not it's something you would use. Well, in today's video, I'm going to give you an overview of the analytics extension that is available for XR Photo, and you could decide for yourself whether or not it's worth the $39. Now, as you can see, I have XR Photo open, and I'm looking at all my images. So I have all the images that I have in XR Photo active in this view. To get to the analytics extension, just go up to extensions, and it's right here. You could see there's an overview, and then there's the actual analytics. Let's go to the overview first. Uh, once you have the extension installed and you go to this overview, all this is is kind of a help screen. It's just giving you an idea of what you'll see when you open up XR Photos Analytics extension. You'll see this little donut with different parts of it representing the camera you happen to use um, for this view that we're looking at. And again, in my view, I'm looking at all my images in XR Photo. So these aren't uh, my, the actual cameras that I've used for these images. This is just an example. You could click here for first steps, and what this will do, it will bring you to XR Photos website, and you'll have this downloadable PDF, which is just a help screen, basically. And it's in German and English. The first part is in German, and to get to the English part, you'll have to scroll down. But that could help you as well give you an idea of what you can do with analytics. Now, let's go back here. Now this really, again, it's just kind of a help screen, so we'll close that down. We're gonna go back to extensions and we're gonna go to the actual analytics and we have the option to open our last session or open a new analytics session for the current view. And again, my current view is my entire XR photo library. So let's open that. And as you saw in that previous screen, we have this donut that represents the cameras that I used for these images. Now, I could just hover over part of the donut, let's say this part, and I have 704 images in my XR Photo Library that were taken with the Nikon D500. And then I could just go around and look. Here's Sony A7R4. There's an X-T4 by Fuji. There's a Nikon Z7 II. There's a Nikon D850. There's an icon ZFC and so on. So I could go through and get these little chunks in here. Also, you could just hover over the list on the left and you'll see that it will indicate each of these as I hover over these. Now, if I want to see something specifically, like for example, let's go in here and let's see here. There's an icon Z9. I have two photos in this library taken an icon Z9. I want to see what those photos are. Just click on it. And then down in the film strip are the two photos. And then you could go to the, you know, for any of these. So you could click on any of these to just undo it. Just click on it again. So right now I'm looking at the Fujifilm X-T4 images down here. And just click on it again. Now I'm seeing all images. You could do the same thing over here. Just click over here. There's all the images taken with the Nikon D800E. And just click on it again. And now we're looking at all the images. So whoop de doo We just saw all the images taking with the different cameras that I've owned at one time or another. This is the donut view, as I alluded to. We could go to the chart type and we could see different charts. You want to see a horizontal bar chart? There it is. You want to see a vertical bar chart? There you go. How about a pie chart that's similar to the donut chart? There's that donut chart. How about a stack? And finally, how about a heat map? So you have a lot of different views you could choose for your chart. Let's stay with that donut. All right. Now the maximum number of elements. I happen to have 18 different cameras represented here. So I could see less if I wanted to. I could bring this down to six or whatever. I'll max it out to all 18. The maximum number of photos per element. Obviously the Nikon D500. I happen to have 704 images from that camera in this database. That's going to be the max or you could just see less so it'll just bring it down and there's the xt4s there you know so max that out the minimum number of photos per element um it's down to one so if you want to see 
just cameras that you took over 100 images with. You could change this or something like that. Now, these are the cameras. What if I want to see something else? Let's open this drop down. How about by lens? All right, again, same thing. There's a 200 to 500 Nikon lens. There's a 24 to 70 uh, Nikon lens, I believe. There's a 16 to 55 Fuji lens. There's a Nikon Z 24 to 200 and so on. So I could just go see the lenses. Again, the lenses are listed over here on the left. How about my F number? Okay, F8. That is probably the aperture I use most, particularly for landscape images. F2.8, F11, F14, F4, F16. Surprised to see that and so on through. So you can see, and they're all over here. So if I want to see f1.2, I took an image with that, apparently. Three images there is of my son, Joe. So at f1.2, how about f4? I could click over here. There's some waterfall images. Uh, for some reason, I took at f4. How about f16? I almost never shoot f16. These first four were relatively recently, so I must have been trying to get the background in focus. So, so on, so on, and so forth. Uh, different things you could look at. Let's go back over to our drop down. How about, I don't know, ISO? So you can see that um, 400, uh, ISO 400, there are 207, ISO 100, 260, so on. So you could see your ISO numbers, ISO grouped. There you could see. So less than or equal to ISO 16, so on. Um, I don't know, different things you could do if you're into this stuff. Uh, width and height, uh, you could get if flag ratings, star ratings, things like that. Um, right now, let's just go back to camera. So you could search different ways, you know, different things. What lens you use the most, what camera you use the most, and so on. I should say, though, I should mention that my XR da database, I just set it up for demo purposes. It doesn't reflect my actual entire image database. Uh, my image database is like 70,000 images, and there's only maybe 1,000 or so in here. So it doesn't reflect what I actually use. For example, the Nikon Z9 is my current camera. I use that all the time. So that one is the one that would have the probably the most recent images, and there's only two of them in this database. I don't own the Fuji X-T4 anymore, the Fuji X-T1. Uh, the Canon EOS 5D is not even mine. That's a stock photo that's in here. Uh, the, both Canons that are represented over here. Um, so some of these cameras aren't even mine. They're just stock photos. So this doesn't truly record, um, reflect my actual database. It's just for demo purposes. Um, so, and then you could sort by, you know, increasing numbers, increasing numbers, decreasing stuff like that, photo count. Uh, you could filter by date. You just want really old images, really new images, or a specific range of images, certain year you might have took images. You could do that as well. You could filter it by star ratings and color labels. If you just want to see the images in your database that you have a red color label that have also have two star ratings something like that, you could do it. You're looking for a specific keyword, you could do that. Now, of course, this sorting and, you know, the star ratings and color labels and the uh, keywording, you could do all that type of searching in XR Photo. You don't need to purchase this extension to do that. All this extension does is show you the breakdown of your database by camera model or by camera model or by f-stop or by ISO and stuff like that. That's what this extension does. So pretty much um, the filtering, everything that's a filter on down, you could do in XR Photo without paying the $39 uh, for this extension. And also, by the way, I'll have um, a link in the description below this video to a playlist where it has all my videos I've done in XR Photo. And in those, uh, there are two other videos. And in those two other videos, I do searches by keyword and by different, you know, ways of searching that you could use in XR Photo. So you could see that in those videos. Get filtered by metadata. So if you only want to see, let's say, let's go with the Nikon D500. I only want to see that. And I only want, no, oh, they're all at F8. Isn't that funny? Let's do a different one. You can tell I'm a boring photographer. 
How about uh, Nikon D7000? That's a really old camera that I don't... Oh, I still own that camera. I gave it to my son, actually. Uh, how about at F2? So there's images I took with that camera at F2 down here. And it's not even my camera, actually. Now I look at it. Because you know what? It's cut off, so it's hard to see exactly what we're dealing with here. So let's go back to all. Let's do this over. Let's get something that I actually own. Uh, let's go with this one, whatever that is. That's a Nikon Z model. That's the Nikon ZFC. And that's, uh, let's go with F5.3. Is that 6.3? Sorry. And there's two images of a cat. So <laughs> cats are usually willing models when I get a camera uh, and I'm just charged the battery and I'm using it for the first time. The cats are the willing models. So there, you could do that as well uh, here. So that's pretty cool. And style. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is just the way you uh, could have your view. So display a grid, display the legend, the legends over here on the left, uh, show values. So you could have that on. So these are always being shown. Otherwise, they'll only show up when you hover over it. So all that is there. You could save your uh, analytics as a PDF. And you could also change the colors of the chart if you want. So you could customize it. If you don't like your Nikon D500 to be this color, change it to a different color. Stuff like that. So that is analytics. When you're done with it, just click close over here and you're out of analytics. And if you go up to extensions, analytics, you could open the last analytics session. If you were doing something there and you weren't done, you could do that very easily there. Close that down. So that's XR Photo Analytics. Again, um, it's $39. You could decide for yourself whether it's something you would want or use. Personally, I don't think I'd ever use it. Um, so it's not something that I would... Um, I would probably use, but everyone's different. Um, so don't be, you know, don't be dissuaded by me. If you think it's something that you would find useful, by all means, check it out. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>